Hello there, YouTube. This is Necro Stevo, and it's time for week two in the League War of the GBA versus the NPL. This week, we will be facing off against Jodor. And if you do not want to watch the team builder, even though they only take a few seconds, feel free to jump forward with the little link in the description. Otherwise, let's jump into this quick little matchup here. Jodor has drafted Terrakion, which is his Z user, Gliscor, Vaporeon, Rotom Moform, Komala, Mega Alakazam, Incineroar, and Galvantula. So quite the threatening team there, especially with Terrakion as a Z user. That is, between that and the Mega Alakazam, definitely nothing to play around with there. Now the nice part is here is with the structure of my draft, my opponent is at, is at a relative disadvantage when it comes to speed tiers because I have multiple ways to set up Trick Room, different things to abuse it, and if I don't use Trick Room, I have things bulky enough to take on his hits. So with that in mind, let's take a look at my team. You can see up first we have a Tentacruel here with just enough speed to creep something like a, a Gliscor or a, like a really highly invested Rotombo or something like that. I just went with Acid Spray, Toxic Spikes, Rapid Spin, and Scald so that I wouldn't be completely stalled out by something like Vaporeon, but I could still relatively threaten something like a Gliscor switching in or an Incineroar even. Uh, with the, a lot of HP investment and that much defense, I'm guaranteed to take hits like Continental Crush or even Earthquake from Gliscor, which is really, really nice. And I also get to really just throw off burns here Toxic Spikes is nice because his hazard removal is the Gliscor, the Rotomo, and the Komala, and everything else really, really doesn't like being toxic. I would only need one layer of Toxic Spikes in this matchup, really, just because of the relative frailty of a lot of his Pokemon. Up next, we have our Mystic Water Crawdont. Uh, I changed this Crawdont around quite a bit for this matchup. Shoutouts to Aiden for helping me team test here. Initially, I was going to use Life Orb, but I kept running into the issue of just running out of HP with my Crawdon due to its own attacks. So Mystic Water is that nice middle point there where my Aqua Gen and Liquidation get boosted. But really for this matchup, all I need is, is Liquidation and Knock Off. I'm going to get to use Aqua Jet against something like Terrakion because I can outspeed it even if I get a Dragon Dance. But uh, really it's just here to clean up at the end is what I'm hoping that it will do. It can nab Aqua Jets against his... Uh, more weak attackers such as the Komala, a defensive Gliscor, or a Vaporeon too. I do need to be careful about burns or other status coming out, so I'm going to have to scout around a lot before I bring it in, but I do think it has the capability to clean up. After that, we have our Assault Vest Tapu Bulu. I had a lot of annoying times trying to capture a good Tapu Bulu with a good nature. So fortunately, several people on Twitter were able to help me out with getting good natures on my Tapu Bulu. But uh, now I can definitely draft Tapu Bulu in the future, which I'm excited for because I have so many natures for it. But anyways, though, Assault Vest here is to not only allow me to take a hit or two from Mega Alakazam, it stops Galvantula from being able to two-shot me very easily with something like Bug Buzz. And then, of course, we'll pour on with Ice Beam or Rotom Mo with a hidden power, maybe even hidden power poison, isn't going to be able to one-shot me. Horn Leech is just there for the overall longevity. I'm mainly going to be throwing off Wood Hammer with this set, honestly. So it's, I almost went banded here, but I need something to take on Mega Alakazam in case it gets set up with a Columbine or something like that. After that, of course, Camera Up is back again. The Mega Camera Up set this week has Earth Power, Fire Blast, Nature Power, and Stealth Rock. The idea of getting to go for a nature power which turns into energy ball on grassy terrain and hit Vaporeon with it just sounds absolutely delectable, so I couldn't pass that opportunity up. On top of that, Mega Camera does force a few switches against him, most notably against something like Galvantula, to a lesser extent Incineroar, so getting up Stealth Rock shouldn't be too difficult. Uh, I just went with enough special attack here to make sure that I could two-shot Komala and uh, the rest I just put in defense because that allows me to take many more hits from Incineroar and the Terrakion. And that also stops the Gliscor from 2-hit KOing me if it's an offensive Gliscor. After that, we have our Trick Room Ice Beam Lunar Dance Toxic Cresselia. 
This is a really wonky spread, but the basic idea here is that I need to be able to take the Z move from Terrakion. I also need to be able to take multiple Shadow Balls from Mega Alakazam. And I need to be able to take at least two Bug Buzz from a non-choice Bex Galvantula on top of taking Knock Off from Incineroar. So there's a lot of different hits I need to be able to take there. And I really wanted to make sure that I outsped something like an uninvested Vaporeon or uninvested Gliscor, things like that, because that allows me to get off the Lunar Dance to bring in either, I'm, I'm assuming I'm gonna be bringing in my camera up or my Crawdon if I try to use it earlier on, because I, I would need to just bring their HP back up to speed. Coxic is just there so I can hit the Rotom Mo with it. If, if, I mean, I don't know. Toxic, I, I really just needed something in the last slot, and I was worried about the, the Rotom Mo being some type of bulky defensive set, so that's why we put Toxic in there. Last up is Scizor with Swords Dance, Quick Attack, Roost, and Bullet Punch. Shout outs to the Monatui for the, uh, the team prep ideas there, just because I was struggling with the type of set I could bring that wouldn't be walled by one Pokemon or another. And he suggested Quick Attack, so that way I could go with the Swords Dance but not be walled by Gliscor. Um, and at the same token, I could chip away at the Rotom Mo or the Incineroar as well. So that gave me a little bit more freedom in my team options. And uh, it even gave me a priority move to hit the Galvantula harder too. So totally made sense there. So that's the team. And let's hop right into the team matchup. Or the battle. We just did the team matchup. Yes, to the battle. Alrighty, so thank you for watching the team builder. If you did not, a quick, brief, and quite dirty rundown of my team is going to be a pretty speedy, yet bulky tentacruel with toxic spikes and rapid spin it's called. Uh, we have our Mystic Water, Dragon Dance, Aqua Jet, Liquidation, and Knockoff, Crawdon. And then we have a nice Assault Vest, Tapu Bulu with an Adamant Nature Max Attack just to take those hits from the likes of Mega Alakazam. And then we have an offensive, I'm sorry, a very defensive Mega Camera up with a lot of HP and a lot of defense, followed by a Trick Room, Ice Beam, Lunar Dance, Toxic, Cresselia, and finally a Life Orb, Swords Dance, Caesar with Roost. So a lot of different offensive options there. The idea being to put Camera up or my Crawdon very healthy in the end game to just kind of clean up. My opponent did not bring a few Pokemon that I was expecting him to bring. But that's okay. I, I will totally deal with not having to fight against the Galvantula or the Vaporeon. That is fine by me. Now here we do just lead with our Mega Camera up because I know I can take any hit from his team bar the Vaporeon that didn't come and get up my Stealth Rocks. He does just go straight for a Leaf Storm, and I was like, oh man, I didn't expect him to go straight for that type of attack there, but it is nice to not see like a Hidden Power of Water or something. Uh, I just go straight for Fire Blast, and even without major special attack investment, I'm able to one-shot the Rotom, which is really, really handy this early on. I don't have to worry about it Volt switching around or anything. Uh, he does go out into his Mega Alakazam, and not only do I not want him tracing my sheer force on his attacks, but uh, I'm pretty sure he can take me out with a hit from that range. And so we go directly out into Tapu Bulu, who I know can take any of those hits with the Assault Vest. And again, barring Hidden Power of Poison at plus one or something like that, I can take two hits from this thing. Uh, he does trace the Grassy Surge, which is fine. And he goes straight for Calm Mind. And I was like, oh, this is great, because that might mean that he'll stay in. And if he stays in, I'm going for Wood Hammer. 100%. Uh, so <laughs> I click the Wood Hammer, praying that he stays in. And he does, because I know I can live a plus one Psychic very easily. And I live that with plenty of HP. Go for the Wood Hammer. And yes, because I use Wood Hammer and he's at full HP, this means that this is a, the best kind of down, the double down. But I think that that was a very good trade in my favor, just given how offensively pressuring Mega Alakazam can be. I go out to Tentacle here. I was expecting him to go out to his Gliscor, and I was hoping I could scare him into going, oh man, maybe he has the Ice Beam. But he goes out to his Incineroar, which I'm also okay with because 
I could set up my toxic spikes, but because his remaining poke out of his remaining Pokemon, two of them aren't affected by the toxic spikes, I just go for damage. And he reveals the Pasho Berry, which means that that Skull doesn't do very much. But he also goes for Sword Stance, and I was like, does he have the Earthquake? Does it matter that he has the Earthquake? Because with the Grassy Terrain up, it's not going to do that much damage. But he shows that he was just going to go for the Darkest Lariat. But because of my hefty HP investment here, I'm able to hold on, which is really, really nice. And I'm able to just throw off more Scalds. Here I was like, he's probably going to swap out to the Kamala. But I was afraid to predict him to swap out and just lose my Tentacruel for no reason. So I just decided to stay and continue going for Scald, knowing that if the Komala came in, then I can just swap it into Caesar or something, uh, or I could even go out to my camera. Like I have several options here on the Komala. Seeing the damage he took from my Scald, I'm relatively certain he has a pretty hefty HP investment, but it doesn't really tell me how offensive he is, of course. So expecting him to go for either like, Earthquake maybe his normal type move. I go out in the Caesar, but he surprises me with knockoff, which is kind of annoying because I, I did like the extra power from my life orb here because I had Roost. My HP wasn't a terrible issue. He goes out to his Gliscor as I set up a Swords Dance here because I was figuring he'd just stay in and, and try to stall me out or something like that. I, I wasn't really sure what he had planned there. Now here I do make a little bit of a misplay because I wanted to see how well Glasgow took this bullet punch and the answer is very well it's not even a two hit KO after that's not it might not even be a three hit KO at the poison heal but we did see that his earthquake did right around like 55 damage there and so I could have just bullet punched again but I was like oh well I'm gonna go for roost here and I, because I thought I could live another Earthquake. And it was a roll, granted. It wasn't completely crazy for me to do that. But I most certainly should have just bullet punched. Uh, that would have either forced his Gliscor to roost. That would have also put his Gliscor in range of either Aqua Jet or something like that later on. Like, it didn't make any sense for me to not just go ahead and go for that bullet punch right there. And I go out to my Cresselia and immediately set up Trick Room. Knowing that Gliscor, the best thing it could touch me with is probably knockoff, or I, it could toxic me. Uh, he goes for his own knockoff here, but honestly, I'm just going to go ahead and get my Mega Camera back up to full speed here. The best thing I had to hit the Komala with, because I couldn't toxic it, of course, was the Ice Beam. So that wouldn't do very much damage, and I would have been wasting Trick Room turns. So, I just decided to go straight out to my camera up after the Lunar Dance, get him back up to full HP, and now I can threaten his entire team with my Mega Camera up under Trick Room. Now, what I didn't expect is that he actually anticipated me to bring Trick Room for his team, which makes sense given the speed matchup here. And so, a lot of his Pokemon are slower than mine under Trick Room. But fortunately, his Komala was not slower than mine, otherwise, I would have been risking flinch chances there. And I'm able to get up my Stealth Rock and easily 2 hit KO this Komala with Fire Blast and an Earth Power. Uh, now, the Stealth Rocks were really important because, number one, I wanted to make sure if there was a Sash on Terrakion that that gets broken. And it stops the Incineroar from switching in and out a lot. I really could have set up Stealth Rocks earlier, but removing Mi Rotom Mo as early as I did was really, really nice as well. Now, here he does surprise me because his Incineroar is slower than my Mega Camera. Now granted this Mega Camera up is a modest nature, it's not a quiet nature, but I just expect it to be slower. Like he had to go maximum minimum speed <laughs> in order to, <laughs> I don't know why I phrased that that way, the maximum that you can go minimum. That sounds like a weird Fast and Furious movie. Anyways. I am able to take him out with my Nature Power Tri Attack there. I was worried he might swap out into his Gliscor as I went for Earth Power, so that's why I just went for that middle of the road play. Here, I did just stay in and attack because I wanted to force him to take me out, or if he had Defog, I wanted to see it and then do a lot of damage to him with the Fire Blast. Like, I wanted some payoff for him taking my, uh, uh, my camera up out. Now I do just go into Tentacle because at this point in the end game, I just need to make sure that Gliscor is in range of 
an Aqua Jet. So even if that Scald had not critical hit, after the Scald damage there, he would have been in range of an Aqua Jet because it really would have been worse for me if I had KO'd the Gliscor with the Scald there because then it would have been just Terrakion versus my Crawdon and I would not have been able to get off a Dragon Dance here. But since the Gliscor is still alive, that's actually much better for me because I can guarantee get off an Aqua Jet. Even if he had X Scissor, my, I had a lot of HP investment, so I was guaranteed to live any hit from Gliscor. And that allows me to not only get off a Dragon Dance, but that also allows me to ensure that I'm able to KO the Terrakion, barring another Pasho Berry, maybe? I think that's the only thing he could have had that would have mattered in the end game here. So it really just comes down to what's the held item on his Terrakion. I'm assuming he would have brought Z Terrakion, which he actually told me he brought Corkscrew Crash Terrakion. And because of my plus one and the Mystic Water, I'm able to take out the Terrakion and we win one and oh. So we lost the first battle, oh and one, and we win the second battle, one and oh. Making for a really neat uh, robot looking face if you line them all up side by side or I guess just binary either way thank you very much Jodor for the battle be sure to go check out his channel which I have linked in the description and that means that we are at least contributing to the GBA uh, going one and one for this league matchup season now as far as I understand there will only be two battles per player which is why we all drafted smaller teams here so it really makes each battle much more critical. So it'll be interesting to see how things pan out here, but uh, I know I, I just, based on my performance in the GBA regular seasons, I think a lot of people might have had me pegged to just go 0 and 2. So I am here to destroy those expectations and have cool trick room teams when they get camera because what a fun Pokemon to build with. I've been really impressed with how well it takes hits. So let's keep an eye out for how the rest of the GBA and the NPL players do. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Have a good day, guys.